Welcome to part 13 of the Hot Tub Build series, where we're going to talk about this uh, custom control box and how we built, put it together. So first, let's back up a little bit and talk about the processes that the hot tub is going to go through. Uh, we have jets, we have lights, and we have a variety of systems to keep the water clean. And because we've designed a custom control panel, we need to provide a way for that control panel to interact with all the equipment that's in the pump house. So the next video was, is going to be all about setting up the pump house. And this video is about this control panel, which goes in the pump house. So I'll start by explaining uh, all the parts and what they do. Uh, this is the power supply. So this provides five volts and 24 volts. Uh, the five volts goes to this Arduino, which has several shields on it. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, the 24 volts is used to power the pulse width modulation board that powers the RGB LEDs on the control panel switches, as well as the lights on these uh, industrial toggle switches. We have two relay boards. This double relay board switches the jet pump, the first relay switching it either on or off, and the second relay toggling between the low and high speed modes. And then I believe we're using only two of these relays here, one of which switches on the low voltage lights in the hot tub. And the other one is a normally closed relay that can switch off the circulation pump. If we wanted to use the Arduino to control the circulation pump, we can selectively switch it off, but its default is on. Uh, there's a variety of terminal blocks uh, in this control box that allow us to just simply connect all the wires that are coming in. We're going to be having all the AC power wires coming in the top, grounds on this bar, and all the control wires from the control panel and temperature sensors coming into these. The Arduino here, which I mentioned before, is the brains of the control box, and it has a couple shields on it, one of which is the PWM uh, screw terminal board that gives us all the connections and holds the circuitry that manages the RGB LEDs. And then we also have a Zigbee board that it, it has its own little breakout, uh, like a breadboard on which we have the digital potentiometer, which allows us to control that temperature sense, uh, the temperature display in the hot tub. Finally, we have the industrial control switches here. The first one here powers the control box itself and locks out AC power to the rest of the switches so that there's no, uh, you can't really have the pump on without the control system on. The second switch turns on the circulation pump. The third switch is the priming switch and that will turn on the vacuum uh, for vacuum priming. And then the final switch is the ozonator switch. So that turns on the hardwired ozone generator. So let's see how all this was built. This is going to house all the switches and the Arduino to control the uh, pump and heater infrastructure. And this is a panel that is designed to go on the top here, but we're going to mount it on the bottom. So I got to cut it a little bit on each side and then take, take these notches out to clear these guys and then it'll, it'll screw down to the bottom there. All right, on this control panel, we have three different types of holes. There's clearance holes for 832s, here, 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 and here. That's gonna be 3 sixteenths. And then we have clearance holes for 440 screws, and that's gonna be eighth. And then there's a couple of 440 tapped holes, and for that we're using this bad boy, which is pretty cool. It's a uh, it's a drill, and then there's a, a tap, so all in one. And I'm probably gonna use a little drill bit here to, uh, to start each one.
components attached to the control board. And next up is going to be doing interconnects uh, between the power source and the various relays and these terminal blocks. And I'm gonna put these together with heat shrink labels and pin terminals so they look ultra boss because if you're gonna wire something, you might as well wire it to last 100 years. Since I did the first part of the build, we decided to add a couple additional switches. So we have a we already have the control and the circulation pump, but we're gonna add this red switch that's gonna control the vacuum prime pump because uh, so, we're gonna have a vacuum-based priming system to get water pulled into the whole circulation system. And then we got this other switch clear for the ozonator. So I don't believe the ozonator came with any kind of switch on it. Well, neither did the chlorine generator for that matter. Uh, the ozonator will be controlled by this switch Part of me thinks that we should also have a switch for the chlorinator to keep it consistent, but I don't think we're gonna do that right now. So I gotta drill some holes here, mount these switches, add the lighting terminal blocks in the back. I'm also gonna replace the these two terminal blocks with these extended versions. So they're gonna be like that. That'll give us more wiring capacity for the vacuum pump control and the ozonator. Um, one, one nice thing about having everything come into this control box is that the client's planning to sort of hopefully replace all this cobbled together stuff. Well, not really cobbled together, but replace all this with one main custom control board. And so when, once you have a main custom control board, we already have all the wires for all the different devices coming into the same thing. So it'll be pretty much a matter of removing all this stuff, putting in the control board and hooking up all the wires to the control board uh, terminal blocks. So it'll be a pretty easy uh, switch once once he moves down that path. And uh, I think it's a great idea because, you know, you can you can buy all these off the shelf parts and, and put them together yourself with all the wires. But but having a custom circuit board with all this stuff on it not only gives you a lot more cleanliness and uh, organization of all the different parts, but you can monitor a lot more stuff. You can put voltage and current sensors on all the different components and, you know, you just have a lot more flexibility. All right, we gotta drill two more holes for the switches, the USB input, and then we're also gonna drill all these guys out. Um, pretty, pretty stoked that there's enough, I mean, it doesn't really matter because they would disappear anyway, but there's enough holes here for all the things I'm gonna need. So we're gonna have, there's three temperature wells, uh, preheat circulation, post heat circulation, uh, jet, Jet water ambient, which I think we're gonna put just after the check valve, and we'll be able to set it up so when we turn the jets on, it'll instantaneously capture the temperature. And we can get a feel for like what's going on with the static water in the plumbing. Um, our jet pump speed control, our circulation pump power. Uh, V is for vacuum, so the vacuum pump for priming. O is for ozonator, so the power for the ozone system. And actually all these are gonna move down one and this is gonna be a another temperature sensor and a pass through power to the outside. So I'm gonna end up running a utility outlet power through this and a temperature sensor in the same conduit, and that's gonna go to down to a uh, uh, an L that then feeds to the outside of the pump house. So they have a utility outlet because there's some um, like lights they wanna put up, but 
in that external outlet, we'll have a uh, another thermocouple to measure the outside temperature. Um, it's nice because this part of the pump house is shielded from the sun, so it'll sort of capture the ambient outside temperature, not be affected by the sun. Uh, on this side, there's going to be two input holes. Those are three quarter for conduit. That is going to be the entrance of the control cable from the tub itself and the output of the lamps, the tub LED lamps. And then finally, up top, a big input hole for one and a half inch. So all the power, we're gonna jet circuit, the utility circuit, the generator circuit that powers the circulation pump and, uh, and the control panel itself and the low voltage for the lamps and stuff like that. So I should, I should drill some holes now. Just finished wiring up the control box and a little mix up with the blue and uh, red LEDs, but now we uh, can turn this on, powers up, and if we want to turn on the circulation pump, that turns that on and that has an interlock with the relay, so we can control that with the Arduino. Also have a priming pump and a ozone generator. Now I gotta switch the, I gotta switch these because they're in the wrong, the light is the wrong, I gotta switch the LEDs in here. Uh, and then when we press the jet button, it turns the jet on, and this is like a timeout, we're gonna set that longer. It's a nice little fade action. And if you press it twice, it changes the speed to the higher speed or turns it off. And if it is going red, which this might be longer, you can press it again and it'll keep the jets running. And then this turns the lights on and off. So that just toggles this relay, which will switch the power to the lights. So just a little bit more prototyping work to integrate the DigiPot, which will spoof this temperature sensor based on uh, some external temperature sensors and uh, this is almost ready for install. Hi, if you liked this video please let me know by clicking that thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel by clicking the red subscribe button. Please check the notes below the video for more ways to keep this channel going. Your support is greatly appreciated and always never stop building.